Elon Musk just dropped a bombshell. Neuralink's first human trials could lead to full AI brain merging by 2035. What if I told you I could offer you something that would enable you to walk again? I call it STEM, a computer chip that has the potential to change everything. Can anybody else hear you? No, only you. May I point something out? In the drone surveillance footage, Sir Bradner, Marine Corps, address 414 Citrus, New Ground. It sounds like science fiction, but the idea of an Elon Musk AI merge, linking our brains directly with artificial intelligence, is being taken seriously by researchers. The power of computers, our understanding of the human brain, the spatial resolution of brain scanning, the number of bits we move around the internet, I mean, many different measures of information technology double every one year, every 11 months, 13 months, depending on what you're measuring. Uh, so these technologies will be a million times more powerful within 20 years. <clears throat> 20 years. In fact, the speed of exponential growth is itself speeding up. So in 25 years, these, these technologies will be a billion times more powerful than they are today. And we've already seen that kind of progress. When I was an undergraduate, we all shared a computer at MIT that took up half a building. The computer on your cell phone today is a million times cheaper and a thousand times more powerful. That's a billion fold increase in price performance of computing since I was an undergraduate. First, we'll look at Neuralink's current technology and trials. Next, we'll explore the vision of digital consciousness and mind uploading. Finally, we'll tackle the real ethical questions this raises. We also have an exciting news for our subscribers as well. Let's start with Neuralink. It's not just a company. It's Elon Musk's bridge between the biological and the digital. Neuralink's core tech is a tiny brain implant, the N1 Link device. The N1 chip is a coin-sized brain-computer interface that connects to your brain with over 1,000 electrodes and 64 ultra-thin threads that sit flush on the skull. A surgical robot R1 inserts those threads into the brain's motor cortex, the area controlling movement to pick up neural spikes. Then the link wirelessly transmits your brain signals to a computer or phone. In effect, it decodes your thoughts to move a cursor or control a device. So here it is. That's our R1 robot with our patient Alpha who is lying comfortably on the patient bed. Uh, this is what we call the targeting view. So what you're seeing is this is a picture of our uh, brain proxy. And the pink represents the cortical surface that we want to insert our electrodes into, and the black represents the vasculatures that we want to avoid. And what you're seeing is these hash marks with numbers that represents where we intend to put each of our threads. There you go. That's the first insertion. So we're going to see a couple more insertions. The whole process of inserting uh, about 64 threads in our first product is going to be around 15 minutes uh, for this robot. So um, yeah, there's a second one that went in and we're gonna do a third one. In fact, in early 2024, Neuralink began human trials under FDA approval. The first patient, a 29-year-old quadriplegic named Noland Arbaugh, could move a computer mouse by thinking. Musk said the patient made a full recovery and had no ill effects. My implant has like a Bluetooth connection to the computer. And then through that, Neuralink has created an app that they have uploaded to the computer. And through that app, I can interface with the computer. What it does is all of the electrodes on the threads um, are sending uh, neuron spikes and through my intentions so say if I want to try to move my hand I can't really move it but the neurons are still firing that intention is still there so if I want to try to move the cursor to the left I move my hand to the left people ask me all the time if this thing can be hacked and short answer is yes but at this point hacking this wouldn't really do much you might be able to see like some of the brain signals you might be able to see some of the data that Neuralink's collecting and then you might be able to control my cursor on my screen and make me look at weird stuff. By mid-2024, a second participant, Alex, also paralyzed, was able to design 3D objects in CAD software and play complex video games using only his mind. This technology can make people live again, as Alex said, taking an idea, putting it as a design, and actually having a physical item as a finished product makes me feel like I'm building things again. These breakthroughs show Neuralink's brain-computer interface can restore lost abilities. 
Neuralink even launched a convoy study in 2025 to test controlling assistive robotic arms. One patient will use thought control to feed himself and manipulate physical objects. All of this is building toward Elon Musk AI merge scenario. The N1 Implants website even calls it an implantable, wireless brain-computer interface for restoring autonomy. In short, each update, from mouse control to robotic arms, is a step closer to merging our minds with AI-driven tools. These things indicate how inevitable AI is, and we have to learn it to survive in future. To do that, you need right skills and tools, and we are offering you tools and tricks to educate and train you about AI and its future. So, you are never behind. Drop your email using the form at the top of the description to get our free Prompt Like a Pro ebook and future bonuses. Because AI is here to stay, and it can go out of hands. But Musk doesn't stop at restoring function. His vision is far more radical. Neuralink's tech is about reading out brain signals. But the big vision goes the other way too, writing into the brain and integrating with massive AI systems. Futurist Ray Kurzweil predicts that by 2045, we'll reach the singularity when humans merge with AI. As Kurzweil explains, It's fairly slow, though. Mm -hmm. And Neuralink is slow. And if you really want to extend your brain, you, you need to do it at a much faster pace. But isn't that going to increase exponentially as well? Yes, absolutely. So how long do you think it'll be before it's implemented? Where well, it's got to be by 2045, because that's when the singularity exists, and we can actually multiply our intelligence on the order of a, a million fold. Musk's own language echoes this idea. He often talks about achieving symbiosis with artificial intelligence so we don't get left behind. In other words, we'd effectively upload our brains to AI to enhance ourselves. He's described Neuralink as a Fitbit in your skull, and even floated the notion of using it to save and replay memories. The long-term aspiration of Neuralink is to improve the AI-human symbiosis by increasing the, the bandwidth of the communication. Even if in the most benign scenario of AI, you have to consider that the AI is simply going to get bored waiting for you to spit out a few words. I mean, if the AI can communicate at terabits per second and you're communicating at, you know, bits per second, yeah, it's like talking to a tree. Science fiction is even hinting at this. Engineers imagine neural lace, an injectable mesh that wires our cortex to machines. Imagine asking your brain a question and instantly tapping into Google-like computation, a bit like having your phone in your head. Of course, full mind uploading is still hypothetical, but research hints at pieces of the puzzle. But here's where it gets dark. Merging minds with machines opens a Pandora's box of ethical questions as well. The technology is still crude and risky. For instance, Neuralink's first patient experienced a malfunction. Weeks after implant, some of the super thin threads pulled away from his brain. The patient, Noland Arbaugh, said he cried a little bit when he learned the implant was failing, fearing his journey was over. The issue was resolved, but this incident underscores real danger. Brain implants can fail in complex ways. The Wall Street Journal even reported Neuralink once considered removing the implant entirely after the error. Privacy and security are huge concerns too. If your brain is transmitting data, who else can see it? Ethicists warn that a brain-computer link could enable identity theft or hacking of thoughts. As one expert article notes, invasive BCIs raise the potential for identity theft, password hacking, and blackmail, since they tap directly into your brain's activity. In the wrong hands, neural data might be intercepted or altered, even letting an attacker influence your choices or sense of self. Get off the table. Rub your stomach and pat your head. Now stop. See? All good. And what about you? Merging with AI may change who you are. Some patients using BCIs, even simple implants, report feeling a loss of self. Researchers observed that while many benefit, others feel estranged from themselves. Philosophers usually ask if you upload your memories to a machine, are you still alive or just a copy? Nautilus magazine cautions that too much mind uploading could end your conscious existence, leaving behind a sort of zombie version of you. In short, if your brain is partly run by software, does the you that wakes up each day remain the same person? 
Finally, there's the issue of inequality. Who will get these superpowers? Right now, Neuralink trials are limited to a few patients in specialized clinics. It's easy to imagine only the rich affording elective brain upgrades in the future. This has big justice implications. Enhancing some humans and not others could exacerbate social divides. As one analysis puts it, brain augmentation might exacerbate social inequalities if only wealthy citizens have access. So, would you take the plunge? Would you upload your mind and risk losing control of your own thoughts?